Hey, 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 happy day 708 of what she up to now. She being Sharon Hornellstrom, also known as Pajama Grandma. Call this one Challenges Secrets because I'm starting a 10-day challenge going through and using a 10-day challenge to teach people like you and me and other people who want to attract the right people to them, who want to influence and impact the right people that they're here, that we're here on this planet to impact in 10 days. How to attract those people, how to set up the challenge, how to set up a challenge to attract your perfect people all in 10 days. So from zero to full-fledged challenge ready to launch the next day if you want in 10 days. How to set up that challenge to get results, get people that you want to serve coming to you and participating and at the highest level. If you can get people, and it doesn't have to be a 10-day challenge, that's part of what we'll talk about in the in the 10 days, is how long should your challenge be? What should it be about? Yada, yada, yada. All the details and all the mechanics of how to set up your own challenge for the people that you want to attract. So in honor of that, I Googled, because I, like I like to Google, I like to Google and Googled 10 English idioms that are about problems and difficulties or I, I searched for challenges and it gave me problems or difficulties. I love how Google is getting smarter and smarter and anticipating what it is that we're actually looking for. Um, challenges to me aren't necessarily um, negative. They're not necessarily a difficulty. They might be an opportunity, a, a challenge. If I decide I want to go for a 10 mile hike, that's a challenge. It's, it's, I wouldn't consider it a problem or a difficulty. It's a goal. So I think of challenges can be both positive and negative, but I like to think of them like everything else on a little more positive note. Um, I actually thought it was really fun. I took one of them and this is kind of, I'm kind of sick of the book of idioms that I've got, but I, I don't have a different idea of what I want to do with supersize your business right now. I'm just kind of, and I've been, I've had that for, geez, probably 15 years. I've had the, I mean, at least since the early 2000s. So yeah, at least 15 years, I've had the idea that I always wanted to do something with supersize your business. So I'm kind of just parking that group and holding that group. I've done a lot of work on how to build and supersize your business. There's a, um, a, scavenger hunt at the beginning of it where you have to find clues that walk you through the process of how you grow and build and supersize your business. It is, it's really good, but it's way too much for most people. Most people want you to boil things down to the simplest form for them. And I boiled it down to pretty simple forms, but I think it's still, um, I, I think it's still probably like a 30 step or a 30 day challenge or a 30 day scavenger hunt that I put together, mainly so I could do it in less than 10 minute bite-sized pieces. Now there's some days that are more than 10 minutes uh, because I went into detail of how to do things and I added supplemental videos and materials that people could dig deeper in and to listen to. But I try to keep each day under 10 minutes. Uh, I personally, when I do my challenges, try to keep my teaching part of it 10 minutes or less for a lot of reasons, but primarily because we're all too darn busy. We don't have time to listen to I did a seven day challenge called Feel the Favor, which was good, really good by the way, but it was, you know, a couple hours a day for the, the just listening to the video, listening to the, um, the two people that, that did the challenge. It was, it was a, a one or two hour video every day of the seven days, which is fine, but that gets to be a lot. Most of us are so busy, we don't have an extra one to two hours to dedicate to listening to somebody else teach us something and then do our part, do our actions, the thing that we need to do for the challenge as well. Um, I found that with the One Funnel Away Challenge. Love the One Funnel Away Challenge. I've led four groups through that right now so far and probably we'll start another one. I'm trying to figure out how to make mine evergreen, just like the One Funnel Away Challenge is evergreen. So, and I have done that, but I haven't put a, anybody through the evergreen part because I like to do things live. I like to be there so people can actually ask questions. I think that's one of the benefits of going through it with me right now. Um, but I want to automate mine as well since they've automated that. But the One Funnel Away Challenge is a prime example of you cannot um, possibly do absolutely everything to the level that you want to do it going through that challenge um, the first time. Now, I've been through it, I think, four or five times myself. And even the first time, I stuck with it. I did every day. I think I got a couple days behind, but then I made myself catch up. But... I've been involved with ClickFunnels and all of that and their organization, all their teaching. I'm a certified partner for them for, geez, the first time I did it, it was at least two years. So 
at the two-year point, if I couldn't get through it, what the heck is the possibility that anybody that's just heard of it getting through it, especially on their own the first time? Slim to none, unless they're not employed and they have three to five hours a day to devote strictly to that. Um, then, then I think some people could. I'd be curious to see the statistics on that and the number of people that actually did that. I'd also like to see the statistics and the number of the people that enter the challenge and actually do all 30 days, even just listen to the lessons of all 30 days. I'm sure that it's like anything else. It's probably three to five percent. And I used to feel bad about that. It used to really, really bother me when I was younger because whenever I started anything or did anything, I wanted everybody to succeed and everybody to get it and everybody to get done and get what they wanted out of something that they started. And that meant just, just finishing what they started. And I soon, I didn't soon, it took me decades to realize that I can't control that. I can only control what I offer people and it's up to them individually to take action and decide what they want for themselves. And I can't, I can impact it, but I cannot control what anybody wants for themselves. So I loved the little list of 10 English idioms. I'm just gonna read them quickly for you because I think it's valuable. Um, 10 English idioms about problems and difficulties or challenges. Number one, at your wit's end. Number two, catch 22. Number three, dodged a bullet. Number four, the crux of the matter. Number five, grasping at straws. Number six, in dire straits. Number seven, you've got your work cut out for you. Number eight, last resort. Number nine, the tip of the iceberg. And number 10, a vicious cycle. I love these and I guarantee I have used every single one of these or thought them, even if I haven't used them and said them out loud, I've definitely thought and I understand each one of these challenges and difficulties and problems related idioms. I discussed the crux of the matter today for Supersize Your Business because I love this one. It speaks to the root cause, the heart of the matter, the, the real reason we're seeing results, either positive or negative. Remember, results can be positive or results can be negative. A result is just a result. It's, it's a change. It's, it's something that tangible that we can see and say, huh, that's not what I want. I need to change something or, oh, that is what I want. I'm going to do more of that. Um, so the crux of the matter is the one that I talked about. I really like this one because I love root causes. As soon as you find the root cause of something and solve that, it solves all kinds of other problems for you and puts things right and in place in your life and in your, your business or your organization or your job or your relationship or whatever it is that you've got a challenge in. Um, I'll probably talk, I'm gonna look through my book and see if what of these I've already talked about because in 308 days I've probably covered a couple of them and I, I, I will tell you I don't remember anymore out of 300 what I have and have not talked about for Supersize Your Business. Um, and so I know I've done some of them, but I'm sure there's a lot of these that aren't even in my book. So what I do when they're not in my book, I Google them and I find out the origin and then I think about examples from my experiences and other examples that people might be experiencing and I share those. <coughs> <coughs> my cough is getting better, but it is still irritating me. I will say irritating or annoying. It's not irritating me. It's just a little annoying. Uh, so challenge, a 10 day challenge, um, totally lost my brit. Oh, super size your business happy every day. It was really the last day, day 369 today, but I'm going to do, of course, a lessons learned tomorrow. Cause I think I'm already up to about 14 lessons learned. Whenever I do something like this, especially if I spent 365 days on it and countless hours, and I could probably tally up how many hours I could add up the amount of time I spent on the videos doing this, but it's that plus probably three or four minutes every day prep time thinking about, okay, what's the saying? What does it mean to me? What might it mean to me? And how am I going to deal with it during the day? And then going out and actually doing whatever the activity is. So I've got hours and hours spent and invested in something like this. And maybe I'll share that tomorrow. Uh, but whenever I do that, and do something that I spend that much of my time and energy on, I'm gonna look back and I'm gonna say, okay, I did this for a year. What are the big key lessons that I learned from that? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually consciously spend a few minutes thinking about them and then sharing them with the people that I've shared this experience with. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> because if it's worth doing and investing my time in, it's worth figuring out what lessons did I learn from it and then summarizing that for other people and myself as well. I wanna, I wanna make sure I'm, 
I'm learning from the things that I'm doing. I'm not just remotely and automatically doing them for no reason. There's always a reason. Remember the reason I did it. <laughs>